something really crucial along the lines of just following this path is the aspects of listening. To be in this position to make these videos, to work with people in our one-on-one -on -one fashion, listening is an absolutely crucial aspect. And there is a point in this path where listening becomes completely effortless. It's just what makes the most sense. It doesn't require any thought, effort, or any type of doing, really. It just simply becomes a method of existence. Between Angelo or even looking at Adi Ashanti, Eckhart Tolle, Rupert Spira, and so on, we couldn't do these things if we aren't in a complete state of allowance, a state of stillness, a state of listening. It's interesting. We could put it a lot of different ways. Listening could be something in alignment with listening to the heart. It can be something in alignment with listening to the gut, intuition. Yet, it's really clear that it is a form of listening. It is a deep, non-processing, just very clear resonance. It's a instrumentation. It's a tuning fork. It is the best way to describe what it might feel like. To be a, a tool or an instrument or almost like an appendage where it feels like the outer world is all that exists and somehow uh, the body moves, the words come out, the experience seems to be something here, yet not just here. It seems to be spread or more uh, universal or ubiquitous. It doesn't feel like an individual with the center of attention in the world and the world flowing in. It feels more like being an aspect of the world, being a part of the everything, all of the oneness. That's, even then, not quite it. It's not just difficult to put into words, it's just that when words are used, it tends to cheapen the experience to some degree, because words tend to isolate it down into a singular experience, and it's really not just like a singular experience. It's not something that can be really pointed to or oriented to in a very clear way. So we do our best with the tools that we have, using the word I, speaking from even a place of preference. Sometimes that human aspect of things can communicate things a lot better. Yet at the core of it all, there's really none of that going on. No preference, no desire, no goals, just kind of a different type of consciousness inhabiting what seems to be the space around and through the universal body at all times. I know that can get kind of confusing. And something else to point out that a lot of commentary shows up on videos where it speaks of, well, you somehow you're tapping into something that's speaking right to me or you're tapping into something that seems really collective, that a lot of us are experiencing. And of course, I'm not tapping into anything. It's more like we share this experience. It's more like we are all an appendage of something much greater, much more difficult to understand through the conscious mind, yet it can be felt. Something like a piece of a larger organism is almost what the sensation is. And we're having mutual experience because there is a sharing here that of course we have to be connected. And maybe if we don't seem to be directly connected, there is um, countless ways that we are connected underneath it all. These videos are for you. These videos are you speaking. It feels like this body, this apparatus, this voice, all of these pieces are simply just an instrument something that vibrates in accordance to just what is. And the more and more allowance that comes along with that, you will begin to see that agency really isn't the name of the game here. This is something that we just don't need to control or even need to have any orientation around. It just seems to happen. It's a natural state of flow. 
It becomes effortless, easy, and there is a very calm, comfortable, deep sense of well-being that just pervades everything. Well-being is everywhere. It's the sunlight outside. It's the rain. It's the feeling of the body on the couch. It's the look in your dog or your cat's eyes. That exists everywhere. And once we kind of realize that the center of attention and the center of expression isn't here, uh, it seems to be everywhere, almost like a superposition, everywhere all at once. Then it doesn't seem so personal. And when there's nothing personal, we are just completely bathed in the energetic vibrational frequency of this universe. Maybe that's one of the best ways to put it. And so going back to listening, this aspect of just being so open, vulnerable, intimate, and in the moment that it's just pure reception. Like the body is an antenna, a vibrational frequency that just feels, moves, and is in an effortless way. Now we can take some of this and apply it a little bit more superficially or a little bit more practically, if you will. We can play with different types of listening and see how listening is ultimately an aspect of silence, that listening is ultimately an aspect of stillness, that listening is ultimately an aspect of being completely immersed in this just as it is. How could we not be listening? Listening is tricky because a lot of times um, there's a connotation that listening has something to do with just hearing. Listening is more in tune with something that is attention-oriented. Where is the attention? And yes, it can be within the hearing realm and the seeing realm, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, yet real listening is just full engagement with everything in a 360-degree radius. Something three, four, five-dimensional. So in a practical way, listening with each other it can be really nice to be able to pay attention to that and see that our examples of how we listen to each other in these interpersonal relationships, these the ways that we communicate, the ways that we're able to be present for each other, is actually a really good indication on what's going on in the seemingly internal world. And yes, I know there's contradictions everywhere. There is an internal world until there is not an internal world. So if it feels like there's an internal world, this is where we will rest for now until that transcends. And maybe it doesn't. Who knows? We don't need to conceptualize it. Immediacy is saying there is an internal world until there's not an internal world, and that doesn't mean there ever will not be an internal world. There is no suffering until there is suffering, and that doesn't mean that there will ever be suffering. There is no awakening until there's awakening, and that does not mean that there will never be awakening. It is to be that engaged in the moment. So, for now, if there's an internal world, this message is for you. To listen, it seems like there's about four basic types of listening. There is the type of listening where we are mentally processing, and we are thinking, I agree with you, and there's kind of a, a yes ending in that situation. It's actually a wonderful way to listen, yet it's not quite the deepest or the most still that we can be in our listening place. There's a second type, the I disagree with you. Same kind of thing where we are mentally processing, yet there's this internal no and maybe even an external no coming out, and it is about conflict and disagreement. There is a third type, which is I'm engaged or seemingly engaged, yet in my mind I am processing a variety of other things, and maybe it's associated with this conversation yet in some way I'm drifting off into my own narrative or my own story. It's not really listening. And there is this fourth way to simply be with. What does that really look like? Sometimes the language of meeting people exactly where they are shows up in conversations. And what that really looks like is to be able to engage with another human being in a way that 
there doesn't seem to be any mental processing of the conversation at hand. Or if there is, it's so superficial, it is so accessory, it seems like something on the outskirts. It seems like maybe a decoration on the wall. Underneath whatever is being said, underneath the content that's being exchanged, there is something else happening. There is some kind of connection, some energetic exchange. To be fully engaged in that space, that that is true listening. That is listening with stillness. To be able to feel the other person as the conversation continues. To not be so concerned about the content that we get caught up in an intellectual or conceptual space. Instead, to almost be able to feel the other person. To be so engaged in the moment that as they are speaking, it feels like it is our mouth that is moving and it is our voice that is vibrating. And to watch every affectation on that person's face, to watch every gesture with their hands, to be so intimately connected with that other human being in the midst of a conversation or whatever this connective experience is, that we begin to lose our boundaries with who we are and who they are. It sounds kind of poetic. I don't know where I end and I don't know where you begin. And yes, it is intimate. All intimacy does have the same flavor. It's where the boundaries of separation become blurred to the point where we are no longer able to see it. To become that intimate with someone is a very deep way to listen. It is ultimately still and it is complete engagement. And I know there's probably some questions that come up. Well, what about if I'm not engaging with what they're saying? Won't that create some potential conflict? It could. Yet, something that I can point to here that's really clear is anytime that kind of conversation has arisen, there is such a sense of gratitude from the other person regardless of how that content was exchanged because it has been so long since they felt heard. It has been so long since they felt that connected. Instead of having just a superficial content-driven conversation that was just mind-identified, there was something underneath that they could feel. And even with complete strangers, it becomes really clear that um, after that kind of exchange, that kind of listening, they want to hug because there's something else that happens. It's almost like reading between the lines, just listening a little deeper. So play with those a little bit. Maybe you can start to see that you can find a nice balance between exchanging the content and being completely engaged with that person. In those specific aspects that were pointed to in terms of watching the other person so closely that you can see the wrinkles of their face and the way their hands are moving and the way their body is positioned, we begin to see and feel the body language of another human being to the point where maybe we don't see the separation any longer. And ultimately, that becomes a reflection of something that's going on internally as well. It's kind of a beautiful thing. So, being in this position, making these videos, working with people, listening is just something that comes easy and effortlessly to meet people exactly where they are. And adding a small practice of being able to listen to those that we are close to and to be able to listen to those that are strangers, you will begin to see that there is quite a lot of value created there. Listening is so crucial. See if you can listen in that fourth way. Not, I agree with you. Not, I disagree with you. Not going on in your own narrative in the mind, but moving beyond that space into something that is felt, to something that's direct where you start to become the other person. There's a card here somewhere, and it says, all you have to do is become them. Don't know how that was written, really. Maybe what it means is to be so immersed with anyone, regardless if it's conflict or even intimate connection, that we lose our sense of individuality and we do begin to blur those lines of separation. All we have to do is become them. That's listening. As you kind of explore this a little bit, you will find that it's much easier than what the mind is telling you to become the other person. A lot of us have cats or dogs or other pets, and 
we really do listen to them in a way that goes beyond the conceptual. Of course, because they're not able to speak in the English language. They're not able to speak in symbol. And they might understand some of the words we use, yet overall, we really pay attention to their body language. We pay attention to their energetic state. We begin to really, really listen to them. We begin to connect. Because, of course, we're not thinking, I agree or disagree with my dog. Of course not. So... Let that be an example if, uh, if there's a taste of the strawberry there. The way you connect with the animals that you're close to, that you love, is the way that you can start to translate to other human beings. Connect with them in the same way. Be that open and that willing to connect. And just see what happens. You might begin to find that that starts to peel away layers effortlessly just as we continue to explore this path. And from there, who knows where it goes. The one thing that is definitely a guarantee is the better we become at listening, the less drama we have in our lives. And that by itself is a sense of liberation and freedom to be away from that type of pain, that kind of conflict. Give it a shot. And as always, you know, please leave some comments in the comment section and I will be glad to engage with you.